Ahí juega. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this uh, online briefing. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes while everyone's logging on. Uh, so make yourself comfortable, grab a, a notepad and pen. And if you haven't got a cup of tea and a biscuit, you're too late now because we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. I think there's a couple more to log on. Okay, let's get started. So, um, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Tony Sharkey from the Football Transfer Forum. Um, we are delivering an online briefing titled FIFA Football Agent Regulations. Where are we now? Um, I'm joined by... Roberto Carlos Branco Martins, who is the general counsel of the European Football Agents Association. Hi, Roberto. How are you? I'm fine. Tony, thank you very much. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, well? we can hear you great. Where are you, Roberto? I'm actually, uh, well, physically, I am uh, at my office. Mentally, I'm all over the place, uh, Tony. <laughs> um, has FIFA got you that way? Uh, <laughs> no, slight, com no comment. Slight. Yeah, <laughs> and and we're also really delighted to be joined by Dr. Gregor Reiter, who's legal counsel at the European Football Agents Association, and also a member of FIFA's Football Agent Working Group. Good afternoon, Gregor. Where are you, and how are you? Hey Tony, I'm fine. Thanks. Thanks. I am uh I'm at home in Germany sitting at my at my desk and seeing what the reminder of the day will bring. Great. So, let's just go through today's agenda, the running order. Um we've got uh today's let's have a look at the agenda. We're going to we're going to go to Roberto to start off with for a bit of an overview and and, and some uh, pointers about the implementation of the football agent regulations. Then we're going to talk about legal challenges, of which there's been quite a few. Um, Gregor is going to talk about Germany. He's our expert and your former uh, managing director of the German. Uh, football Agents Association. That's right, isn't it, Gregor? Yes, that is correct. Until 2020, I was that. So you were the guy who can really uh, let us know about what's happening in Germany. We're going to then touch on national football agent regulations and what is happening with the member national associations. We're going back to Gregor for an update on the FIFA Agents Working Group. And we're going to finish off with a QA. and a um, Just a little bit of housekeeping. We've got George Whitehouse, who works with the Football Transfer Forum. He's supporting the webinar. The chat is open. Um, we'll be sharing a few things in the chat with you. Feel free to share your LinkedIn profiles if you want to network. But if you've got any questions, and we'll be trying to hit as many questions as we can, please put them in the Q&A box and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, so to begin with, I'm gonna ask Roberto to, to sort of kick it off. Roberto, are you, you, can, you can start with a, just a general sort of overview from, from where you guys are. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tony. Um, well, from the perspective of, uh, of AFA and uh, as reflected also, um, in discussions with the uh, with the board, well, in terms of uh, of a formal statement, I think it's more uh, uh, synergy on what has been uh, said uh, before, and I think that uh, people that are also present at this uh, this talk might be aware of uh, where AFA stands for, and what, in that sense, also uh, the official statement would be. Um, obviously, AFA cannot deny that there's an absolute necessity for a solid legal framework 
that works as much as possible in a uniform way in all countries in the world uh, and all countries that are relevant in the international transfer market, obviously. Um, however, having said that, if, as we see now is the case, if such a strong framework uh, is so harmful for a proper functioning of the competition, and I mean competition in a double sense, in the one hand, competition as a sporting from a sporting perspective the actual football competition because it has an impact but i also mean obviously competition in the sense of the market because it will have an impact on the market as well we already see that um with if i'm correct four and a half thousand now licensed agents but i think alone in the last examination there were ten thousand people taking the examination so a quick calculation of that number would say that maybe if you include the first exam, maybe 30% of people that were previously registered and active as an agent are now able to continue their activities, which is an absolute nightmare, obviously, I would say. So you're saying you think from from the, the agents that were operating previously at the moment... There's only 30% of the agents. Well, I, I don't have the exact number, but if the last examination, almost 11,000 applied for the examination yeah. and FIFA has released uh, on the platform the licensed agent and the numbers of licensed agents, four and a half thousand, yeah. you know, oh, how many people took the exam beforehand? So that's less than 50%. So, you know, there was my calculation to add a couple more in relation to the first uh, okay, let's say worst case, best case scenario, maybe maybe forty percent, you know, have have passed. So you see, there are a lot of people in a lot of problems. I would say because it's a direct impact. So we oppose any system that has an effect that leads to this result. You know, so this is just clear consequence of of this situation. It doesn't mean that AFA is against regulation. It doesn't mean that AFA is against a certain form of a threshold that. Uh, guarantees or at least enhances professionalism to enter uh, into the activities of, of players agents and agencies in general but it needs to be proportionate and now it creates a huge threat on players clubs agents and in our opinion the football ecosystem as such and you will see that it's not only players and agents but also clubs i will come back to that later on when i discuss a couple of issues in relation to other countries but there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace, isn't there? And this yeah. is one of the reasons why we're holding this um, webinar. And I noticed we've got some uh, lots of football agents on the call, and it's that confusion that this is, you know, caused. It, you know, it, it's a real. Um, there's a lot of questions out there, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot of questions out there because you know I've I've took the the liberty uh, also, Tony, to reflect that in. Uh, in the presentation and maybe some of the elements of the agenda are implicitly included in uh, in the talk. Uh, for example, you have the bullet points to focus on the national football agent regulations. Well, I just made a couple of phone calls also to be aware of the main countries where they are at this moment. And people from Italy are just saying at the moment we don't have any clue about what the national football agent regulations will look like. And seriously, you know, um, that, that really... Um, well, that really hits me, you know, because I just can't understand with all the legitimate objectives that uh, obviously FIFA had in mind, which I can't deny are realistic, because if an objective is that you want to have more transparency and professionalism in the industry, okay, I can't do anything else and agree to that. But the ways in which these regulations are now approached and implemented and leaving a total twilight zone for people active, I think it's... Uh, it's uh, it, it's incredible, to be honest. I think it's not, it's a situation where people have not been um, taken seriously, uh, serious enough. You know, uh, in Italy, if you look at the situation there, maybe just to already open a little bit of, uh, of a potential discussion. Yeah, uh, not every person in Italy, you know, is fluent in English or is fluent in French or is fluent in Spanish. Yeah, I, I thought that was a real mistake. It's one, of, but... one of the markets in the world Tony and and people are not able to take the examination in their own language you know so that's for me an absolute absolute no-go and so, German well uh German Gregor you know the German language was excluded wasn't it as well it was it's Spanish French and English wasn't it yes 
uh, we were kicked off the official language list of, of FIFA due to probably not uh, com uh, com applying to uh, the FIFA World Cup regulations in, in Qatar. I think the Germans voiced their opposition to some of the things that went on in that country uh, too loudly for FIFA. And we were kicked off directly in that in 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 that time frame when the debate about the captains uh the arm. Was, was going on the arm by yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah Tony so want to add you know in in that sense I understand uh, Gregor's perspective but you know what what also became clear to me in the course of the months you know I again I think FIFA have a legitimate objective in mind you know when regulating this uh, this profession in a way. And it's absolutely not the case that uh, AFA and I'm convinced other agent organizations uh, as well uh, are against a form of regulation. And I'm also convinced that those agents uh, are also pro, maybe even quite a strict form of regulation. But some, but no, no one is pro regulations that are disproportionate and that will lead to a direct da danger for your uh, for your business and that's something that needs to be taken into consideration so in any case from an overall perspective and also the voices i hear in the in the market is that um people expect slash hope that uh, all the court cases that are going on now, you know, will lead to a situation where uh, we will get out of this uh, stalemate uh, situation and that uh, eventually there will be regulations based on a proper fundament with the OK of uh, all the relevant parties uh, included and uh, not being disproportionate, but a system of examinations and, and cross control till a certain extent. I think that should be welcomed. And I think that everyone that's active as an agent is basically feeling the same. You know, I'm not convinced that leaving uh, the uh, activity totally open to the market will be beneficial for everyone uh, involved. You know, I do see a certain sports specificity where some sports authorities should have a close look at what's going on. But we're not that sport specific that we should be totally encompassed by... Um, by sporting regulations, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do agree, and and I think you know there is a certain number of legacy agents who've already done the exam, um, and those agents who've just done the exam, which was the, the first one was in April, the second one was in September. The ones that have passed will be quite happy, and there was a lot of you know relief from agents that were you know they passed the exam, the study materials were immense that FIFA gave but it was an open book it was slightly easier than the first lot of exams that I took um you know the pass rate was 52 percent for the first one so I think those agents who were have got the license now have passed the exam or got the legacy status um, rubber stamp by FIFA just want to get on with the job don't they they just want to get started but it's understanding you know that's the central thing of this you know where are we now? So, just just go through with for us, Roberto, a little bit about the implementation as far as you see it. Some uh, just some key points for the guys. Do Do you want me to uh, to share the screen now, uh, Tony? Yeah, I do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Okay, I think this works like this. Yeah, perfect. perfect. You're seeing my screen now, right? Okay, I will try not make it too. Uh... Too much just slides and uh you know i would say uh, that we have to look if we could share maybe those slides afterwards we have to discuss about that yeah. uh, but there's quite a lot of text on it but i would like to talk around it as well you know perfect perfect uh, so it's basically also focused on the impact on the day-to-day -day business i thank my uh, colleague uh, sophia that assisted me in uh, making these uh, these slides um, so basically implementation of the FAR, football agent services, other services, and some points of attention. I'm not going any more into issues such as the cap and dual representation. I assume that everyone is aware of uh, those. It is more directed towards the day-to-day -day business in terms of practicalities. What do you need to take into consideration? And I give a couple of my views, which are also uh, sketched due to some uh, requests from um 
members and uh, clients of the uh, of the law firm uh, just for the sake of clarity i think people uh, know that uh, i have a law firm bmw advocate but connected to that is uh, afa as uh, uh, from a consultancy perspective and the general counsel is what i do already for a number of years for uh, for afa so if we look at um the implementation of the far let's go to it directly um so by the 1st of October 2023, the FARs come into effect globally. And in essence, it will govern the occupation of football agents within the international transfer system. And the FAR shall apply. And that's already a very interesting one that everyone needs to take into consideration. It only applies in case of football agent services. And obviously, we also have other services. So we see already a lot of questions uh, related to how do I... Um, how do I um, define the activities that I'm carrying out, carrying out? Because beforehand, it was obviously the case that the job placement element of the football agent services, yeah. of activities of agencies in general, was the core element. And that also a lot of agencies decided to only focus on the income from that activity and perhaps carry out also some other activities adjacent to it. Um, however, now you really have to have a very clear perspective on what kind of services and activities am I carrying out? Are these activities that fall on the football agent services or are these activities that fall under other services? And we will touch upon that shortly uh, later on. Um, however, the intention was obviously to implement the FAR directly into national regulations. The FAR are quite clear, clear and quite strict in that. And then the FAR will be implemented into NFAR, National Football Agent Regulations. But we know now that there are many countries, and um, especially in the big five leagues, where we have a total uncertainty about what will eventually happen with these uh, football agent regulations. Um, as we know in Germany, the most critical elements of the FAR are suspended, but I'm happy that uh, Gregor is here, so uh, I'm quite sure that he will touch upon that in a very elaborate way uh, after my uh, talk. Um, I'm especially interested also in his views in relation to the German uh, link. If we look at uh, Italy, I think that the situation we have now at the moment in uh, Italy today is that there's still an ongoing discussion. The information I got quite recently is that at least the dual representation will not be implemented in uh, in Italy. So the limit on dual representation will not be implemented, but uh, the agent associations are now still in contact or conflict or dispute. I don't know how friendly the relations are there at the moment uh, with the uh, Italian uh, FA. And it's still not 100% clear what will happen there. For as far as I know, there will be there is no national football agent regulation at the moment, and that they are looking to get something in place there uh, from January onwards. So obviously, that also leads to a lot of uncertainty because if you're planning your activities now for the forthcoming window, like every agent is doing actually, um, you will not be able to understand what you can expect in Italy. In relation to France, I know that there's also still some discussion going on. Uh, however, what I got confirmed from France is that uh, there will be no FIFA examination in France. They will stick to their own national legislation, which means that there should actually be an exam in France or a form of equivalent uh, from uh, abroad. So if you're an agent not being resident in France, you need to show that... Um, that you have an, uh, an equivalent status as the uh, agency France. Uh, no payments in relation to minors, which still is the case there. No payments in relation to other services in terms of other services not being regulated uh, by the law. And no breach of an exclusivity contract. So players can't uh, work from a self-representation perspective there. Something that has uh, explicitly been included in the uh, FIFA football agent regulation and the player should always be able to represent uh, himself uh, and that the payments are capped but a cap of up to 10% of the value of the contract so that is something that will remain in France so you will have still the system as we know it now we don't know if certain elements of the FAR will be implemented in France still the extent that national legislation in France allows so 
Then I would say the mother of all arbitration cases against the uh, FIFA football agent regulations, uh, also falling on the very strict principle of confidentiality. So uh, we're not allowed to say too much about it. What we do know and what is uh, public knowledge um, at the moment is that the decision is expected on the 30th of November 2023. The English agents had the ambition to get a, wor uh, a verdict out, a decision out, uh, before the entry into force of the FIFA football agent regulations. Unfortunately, that was not the case. So up until the 30th of November 2023, the existing FA regulations will continue to govern transactions within England. Um, in terms of the big five, let's first focus on, uh, on Spain. There will be um, a request for an interim measure being heard by the court on the 11th of October. So that is next week, within six days. Uh, and I think that the outcome uh, will be known quite quickly. Uh, it will be focused on trying to suspend the, um, the regulations being in force uh, in Spain. Uh, and then there will be like also a main case on the merits uh, simultaneously. So um, in Spain, these regulations are also under fire. Yeah, Roberto, I just had a, had a question there. Obviously, this webinar, the scope of the webinar today, this briefing is Europe. Um, and, you know, just just tell the guys how how important the European transfer um, system is compared to what happens in other territories in, in terms of the value of it and the number of agents that are operating because it seems to me that um, the vast, you know, England's a very big powerhouse in terms of financial and transfers. How, what, you know, what is the sort of um, the, the strength of that European market that we're talking about today? Well, well, I think we all know that the European market is the absolute pinnacle of uh, in the international football industry. People now tend to point also to uh, to the Middle East, uh, more specific Saudi Arabia, but obviously it's still quite small compared to what's going on uh, in uh, in Europe, uh, the European Union, and uh, and England. So it's the biggest markets, I think, uh, in terms of uh, internal internal fluctuation and migration of players but also uh, from countries uh, outside of the European Union outside of Europe you know so it's it's absolutely the biggest market and I saw a very interesting um, graphic uh, recently stating that uh, I think the 20 biggest clubs in the world are actually falling under these scattered form of regulations without there being a uniform uh, far uh, applicable. So I think the far, far majority of the market uh, in terms of uh, economy is yeah. falling on these uh, regulations, which immediately... Just, all yeah, Tom? just to give you a number, uh, according to FIFA, the total revenue in transfers in the 20, uh, 2022 was 621 million US dollars. 599 million of that US dollars were done within the 52 national associations that make up UEFA. Basically, that number says everything about the importance of the European market when it comes to football. So thanks, thanks for that, Gregor. That's really interesting. So what was the what was the top figure? The total figure was Six, so the total figure was 621 million US dollars, and the and the one reflecting on all, the revenue done in Europe was 599. So well, I, I'm, 23 million US dollars were made outside of Europe. Yeah, but it's 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 90 odd percent, isn't it? It's a it's a very big number. So yeah, what we're getting at is that FIFA have got to get it right in Europe. They've got to get it right in the UK and in Europe. Um, well, what what FIFA needs to do is, uh, I mean, with all due respect to all the other markets, they're irrelevant from an economic point of view. Right. It's only Europe that matters. So it should only be governed and 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 uh, constructed in accordance with European law. End of story. Right. Okay. Thank thank you for that. And 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 Roberto, just um, you know, continue on there. You were just talking about um, what you know, what's happening in in various uh, territories in terms of the implementation. I mean, you know, we haven't got to forget, you know, Brazil. Uh, Japan, Saudi Arabia, there are other markets there, but you know, it, it, it's really that juggernaut that Europe is 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 all the revenues coming uh, in terms of transfers through European clubs, really. 
Yeah, indeed, and that's a big uh, that's that's a big issue. I wouldn't have uh, from the top of my head all the situations in in the whole uh, world. So we do focus for now on uh, on these countries in Europe in general. I think it's relevant to say also, uh, Tony, uh, the situation in the Netherlands because that might be uh, of value also for people that are uh, listening now to uh, to this webinar. Um, from non-Big Five uh, countries. Um, the Dutch FA, um, maybe some of you know, uh, ProAgent, the Dutch Agent Association, together with AFA, um, are still in a pending court case against uh, the KNVB and, uh, and FIFA. We tried to um, get some interim measures uh, out. Uh, you know, the media was mentioned that the case was lost. However, that was not the case because there was never a decision on the merits it was only that there was no clear, direct, harmful effect from a financial perspective because um, we couldn't uh, make 100% clear what the financial impact would be, which would be obvious because there was no implementation of the regulation yet. So there was a little bit of a chicken and the egg story. But having said that, it does, it did create huge pressure on the Dutch professional football clubs because they were confronted with a couple of issues. First... Um, the majority of the cases, and I think all of the cases uh, against these FIFA regulations are based on competition law. And if parties that are uh, supporting the creation of an illegal cartel, which could be the case if these regulations turn indeed out to be illegal, then everyone being part of that cartel jointly and severely liable for the damages that uh, the market experiences. So you can imagine that if this cartel turns out to be uh, illegal and the regulations turn out indeed to uh, limit competition in an illegal way uh, and agents were used to earn maybe 10% and now can only invoice 3%, uh, I don't think you need to be uh, a star in algebra to find out what the amount of uh, damages are, obviously. You know, some something with it, I, I did want to ask you and, and Gregor, and, and maybe I was just a little bit ignorant of the fact I thought that one of FIFA's key reasons for doing this was to sort of make a unilateral, so everyone knew what the regulations were. You could work between territories, you could do transfers between France, England, wherever. And and that's not the case, is it? It just doesn't, that, that, that can, I mean, was that something that this try to set out to do? Or is that what I, you know, have, have I got it wrong there? I thought it was going to be, you know, that everyone could follow FIFA's rules and it made it easier to work between countries. Well, I, I think you probably got a, a bit wrong because it's fairly easy to work between countries right now or under the old system, depending on where you are. So FIFA did not need to regulate that again. They, the old system certainly did have some flaws that needed to be um, attended to, but FIFA way overshot and I think the, the main reason uh, they introduced these new regulations is in line with what Infantino promised when he was elected FIFA president in 2015. He basically said he wants to drain the agent swamp. And the main focus of these regulations is the fee cap, is the fact that everybody in the future has to pay, has to be paid and pay through a clearinghouse system. Yeah. But the, 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 the core of the regulations is not needed to, to have the market uh, uh, have to, to to get to get a to, to become a functioning market. The opposite is the case. The, it it will create less transparency. It will hurt the smaller clubs, the smaller countries, the smaller players, the smaller agencies. It's basically, if, if you ask me personally, I think it's a propaganda scheme from Infantino. Period. Roberto. Uh, well, I'll let my German friend be the bold one uh, today. <laughs> But uh, I think that, uh, no, yeah, I agree to a certain extent, but I also disagree uh, on on uh, on some points. I do think that uh, FIFA, in the end, uh, was confronted with a situation that registration in every individual country, you know, like we have all we had with the regulation working with intermediaries, very tedious, you know, and some countries even registration per individual transaction had led to loads of, uh, of headaches uh, around the world. So um, 
whatever uh, whatever goals lie beneath the motivation to come up with these uh, regulations, I think we need to look into the objectives that are in uh, the actual regulations and those objectives. Uh, in my perspective, again, all legitimate, you know, and I believe that if FIFA would have been looking for an instrument to regulate it in a proper way, obviously I don't agree with the content of the regulations as they are now, which is, in my opinion, absolutely clear. Um, but I, I, they've underestimated the impact of, of Europe, you know, the national associations and the market. They've truly underestimated the impact of national legislation. In Italy, we have the CONI, the Olympic Committee, that's mandated, you know, by national legislation, by the government, to regulate sports and to also delegate that mandate to national sports governing bodies. But it's all based on the law, civil laws. Uh, France, the same thing, you know, Italy is a powerhouse, Germany goes their own way, you know, we, we knew that in, in the past, and I don't think that it's feasible to dictate that from one very unilateral perspective, uh, and then again, we've talked a lot about the whole consultancy process, you know, leading to, uh, leading to these regulations, well, I've finally decided, let's agree to disagree with FIFA in that, uh, that respect, you know, we believe from an Asian perspective, and I'm sure we're not the only ones uh, in the world of Asians, that there was absolutely no proper consultation. And that's, that's what you get, you know, that's what you get. If you don't have a proper consultation and don't take everything into consideration, then I think you can expect these kind of problems. And I'm quite certain FIFA did expect these kind of problems and thought, let's fight them in court and see where we can, where we can go. But unfortunately, now uh, we're in a situation where no one's happy. You can't you can't convince me that FIFA is now content with what's going on at the moment. You know, so we we have to look for uh, for an alternative, and I believe we will. Yeah. Okay. So, are you going to go on to talk about football services a little bit? As yeah. Well? Okay. I will. I will go through it. But now I understand. You know that you're more in uh, to uh, the conversation uh, mode. So I'm a little bit uh, nervous. <laughs> The rest of the slides, but I will I will continue. Um, okay, so the point I'm trying to make here with the football agent services, and to say directly to the people that are listening and watching now, or the people that are going to be advised by the people that are uh, listening and watching now, is that you need to be very clear about what specific uh, service is being provided, eh? because the football agent service, a football related service performed for on behalf of a client, including any negotiation, communication, related or preparatory to the same or other related activity with the purpose, objective and or intention of concluding a transaction. You know, the first definition. This creates a limit, but it also creates lots of openings because apparently everything that is not connected to these services do not fall under the regulations of uh, FIFA, not on the FIFA um, regulation. So I think you need to be aware of that, that a lot of issues fall under other services, which you all touch upon uh, later. But what I really want to point out is the following, and that can create an absolute nightmare in the industry. So I truly hope that people will not push that red button constantly, but I'm afraid that we will, uh, we will see that. If you look at football agent services, there are a lot of services that can be done by people that are not a licensed agent or not an agent at all, because the management of a career, in a sense, could be considered to be other services and therefore you don't need an agent license. One other element that is uh, marked as a football agent services, but does not fall under that in my perspective, not directly under that definition of a transaction, for example, is an approach. Up until now, the far majority of agencies that I know don't have their main agent man doing the calls or standing around uh, the pitch during training to approach players, their parents, you know, in order to find out if people will be interested to take their services. Uh, yeah, so, I, I do. I do, Roberto. But most companies that I know have, you know, so almost scouts, their own scouts, their own people looking at the games and talking to parents and what have you. Exactly. No, so that is that is uh, exactly what uh, that is exactly the problem, because if now an approach can only be made by the 
licensed football agent. Yeah. You know, many companies where one person that before this collaborated with a number of scouts, what on earth does he need to do? You know, be present in five places at the same time, you know, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And that would not only be a problem because you know also quite well, Tony, I'm quite sure that uh, we have a lot of WhatsApp message circulating around the world saying, you know, if you're interested in our company, you know, feel free. And now I am also defining it in a more a pleasant way because you can also think about messages saying your current agent is nonsense, you know, because he did this and this and this and that and come to us, you know. And every, that's, an approach. that's an approach under the FIFA regulation. Every, mainly, huh? It's worse now because every message that you send via WhatsApp Make a screenshot out of it, you know. Someone can make a screenshot out of it, send it to FIFA under the warning system, and then there's an official complaint uh, and people will research your activities. So obviously this leads to a nightmare situation. So please be careful in relation to that approach and structure your company or advise your clients to be very strict on administrat in administrating these kind of activities. The world truly has changed in that sense. Yeah, I mean, you know, speaking from my own perspective and, and the perspective of many agents, administration isn't our strongest point. You know, when 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 the English HMRC are asking for our proof of dual representation and how, how many meetings did you have with the club, we're not great. I, I just generally speaking, taking notes on every meeting, logging every meeting, logging every conversation, it's, you know, another 20, 30 hours on your month's work, isn't it? You know, so it's it's opened a real can of worms in that respect. Yeah, in, in, indeed. I'm trying to be a bit quick now, uh, Tony, because I, I always the time and I want to take, don't want to take away too much time of uh, away Gregor's talk and potential questions. Uh, other services. The point I'm trying to make here with the other services, again, define the services that you're carrying out because now you'll be confronted with a situation that there's a cap on the earnings that you can uh, uh, achieve uh, via football agent services. We know the cap 3 plus 3 are uh, 10% in certain situations. But I'm convinced that there were many, many agencies that were actually doing a lot of combined services and shoving them all under the job placement, the football agent services uh, issue. Um, if you are asked by a club, you know, if you are aware of a potential talent for that specific position and you will go back to your office and you will work with your data people and you will screen the whole uh, team and you will come up with a suggestion you know, for a specific player. In my perspective, that's not a football agent service. It's a scouting service. You know, If people are from a club are asking you to negotiate a contract and they will say, listen, we will pay you a fee now, but we will continue to pay that fee every year. And one of the reasoning for, for us behind that is that we want you to be there along the way that the player is there. So we want you to make him feel good and not unilaterally terminate his contract or whatever. What is the club asking you? The club is actually asking you to manage the career of the player and to make him feel okay. The club is not asking you to trigger a transaction. No. So I would not agree that the club will pay me for those services and include those services under the cap. The issue is, and that's why you need to be very strict on admin and be very clear on that, the issue is that that your your suspicion is upon you, you know, that you get these two, uh, that these will be combined to fall under the cap. But if you're able to make clear what kind of work you've done, then obviously there's a bigger chance that you will be able to separate those business and at least minimize the loss of those uh, those caps to your uh, to your company. It will not be easy. Yeah. But at least it will create some some clarity, and obviously we can discuss about this for quite a long time. But uh, thanks, I think that's yeah, mm -hmm. Th thanks, Roberto. Do you want to hold on to this slide? We, we'll we'll tackle that a little bit later. What mm -hmm. what I'll do is we'll go. We we talked about the legal challenges around Europe, and and you yeah. identified um, the certain territories where there's legal challenges going on. Um, I did. Uh, before we get on, don't we won't mention Germany in this particular bit because we're going to go to Gregor after that. But my question would be, what about that Cass case where it was an agent body who I've not re I'm not really familiar with. Um, 
Profa or something like that, it was called. Um, what happened in that instance, guys? Well, Gregor I... took off the phone, so uh, I'll leave it to you, uh, Gregor. <laughs> well, as you all know, the CAS is an arbitration court, and they handed down an arbitration award. And as far, which FIFA obviously celebrating at the judicial answer to all the questions that have been raised. Um, however, be it being an arbitration award, it, it's act it actually has no value whatsoever. It's not an ordinary court. It cannot be enforced uh, outside uh, uh, the, the, the parties involved in the, um, in the case. So in, in, in uh, here, what, what happened is PROFA and its members are bound by the CAS arbitration, uh, even if they would work in Germany, whereas everybody else who works in Germany can, can roam freely. Um, uh, furthermore, the um, circumstances surrounding the, the that that award are, oh, let's say, at least suspicious. Um, the German Federal Supreme Court in the Pechstein case, which was decided last year, last summer, actually voiced severe doubts uh, against the Court of Arbitration for Sport being an arbitrational court in the genuine sense of the German procedural law. And that um, the verdict or the, the, the award that has been handed down actually underlines that. Just to give you one very brief example, there is um, in, in, in competition law, you decide between uh, a regulation that actually is made to infringe on competition, uh, whereas a there, there are regulations that have a different goal, but like as a side effect fringe competition uh the, the the first are what are what is considered a hardcore cartel there's no way in justifying them mm. the second can be justified um now cas said the court of arbitration said well the new fifa regulations are not a hardcore cartel um and the plaintiff being the agents failed to prove that they have an inf that they have a competition infringement as a side effect. That is, uh, you can read that as I think it's line two five seven or two five six something around there. Um, basically, if with Cass having said that, the case is over. Uh, case dismissed. End of story. Yeah. And the next line or the next line after that, uh, Cass says, "Well, but FIFA actually has acknowledged." That these regulations have a side of have a, have a competition side effect, you know, which is from a from a lawyer's point of view, you ask yourself, wait a minute, you won the case, why <laughs> on earth are okay. you actually now saying, well, yeah, yeah, they are, they have a side effect. We we agree. Yeah, yeah. The 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 only reason why they did that is because they wanted to open uh, the way for cast into what is called the Mecca Medina test in order to give, so CUS could voice that these regulations based uh, in, in, in when, when tested against the Mecca Medina test actually are, are valid and are in line with competition law. Be the reason why they did that is because they know the European Court of Justice will exactly uh, administer that test. And right. they wanted CUS to say that. And that is my theory, I don't have any proof for that, but um, you know, the entire, award reads like that and there's some other circumstances around it that are very suspicious i would assume they knew what cuss was going to say right right so for my lines gregor made headlines for sure yeah from from my point of view that award is worthless right and it's certainly not what fifa deems it to be it's it's an arbitration court it's not an it's not an ordinary court therefore it, it's 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 a nice read for scholars but from a practical point of view i'd say well yeah whatever <laughs> okay who so, cares so gregor talk to us about germany and what's happening in germany yes germany the mm. land of milk and honey for agents <laughs> well <laughs> um Germany at a at a very early stage has been confronted with legal challenges to uh, to the to the new FIFA agent regulations. Uh, the earliest case was um, filed in front of the district court of in Mainz in 2021. Um, it being a preliminary 
uh, a case uh, where the plaintiff was seeking an injunction against FIFA. Uh, that injunction was rejected um, based on the fact that uh, the court said, uh, based on, on, a, on a procedural question, there's two kinds of injunctions in Germany. One is harder to prove than the other. I don't want to uh, bore the audience with judicial details. However, that the district court mindset, this is this injunction is the one where you have to prove where, where the burden of proof is harder. You have to prove serious economic damages. Uh, you plaintiff weren't able to to do that, so uh, so they denied the the injunction. They did not, and as FIFA would want wants us to believe, FIFA always says we have won every single case except the one in Dortmund. That is simply not true. Yes, they have won cases on a procedural matter, but as Roberto rightfully pointed out, it's the same is true in the Netherlands, the same is true in Mainz. What really counts is the merits. And what the District Court of Mainz then said in the main proceedings, they actually referred the case to the European Court of Justice saying this, this legal issue touches upon European law and we want you, European Court, to, to give us advice on how to handle these questions. And in that what is called a pre preliminary ruling procedure. The court has the chance, they don't need to do that, but they can to give their opinion to the European Court of Justice. And the District Court of Mines has done that. And if you read through their opinion, they are of the same opinion of, as the District Court of Dortmund. They said, these regulations violate European competition law. So they denied the injunction on a, on a simple procedural question, but on the merits, they share the opinion of the district court in Dortmund. So, so Gregor, at the moment, what's, what are agents doing? And, you know, is it everyone who's an agent in Germany or is it German nationals or is it German players even? Or I don't know, what is it? Well, that's a very good question. I, I'll get to that in a second, just, just to elaborate a bit on what Dortmund said. Dortmund... The, the, the case that actually stopped the FIFA regulations in Germany. They said, well, we have a different opinion as, my, as mine is concerning the procedural questions. We believe this is, this is the, the uh, security injunction, which is a lot easier to get. Uh, that's what it is, and there, therefore we grant it. That's why they stopped it on a, on a different procedural uh, answer to the same question as mine's. On the merits, what Dortmund said, they they have the same opinion as mine. What they said, and they said that that is that is literally in the judgment. This is a hardcore cartel that cannot be justified. Period. End of story. Uh, a hardcore cartel. That's, yeah. that's in it's in the ruling. It's it's I'm quoting I'm quoting from the ruling. I'm not making this up. I can think um, of hardcore hard cartels. And... Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um. That case has been appealed. The appellant court Dusseldorf will hear the case on January 24th. Up until then, 2024. Up until then, the um, uh, enforcement of the new regulations in Germany has been exempt, and FIFA and the German National Association had to pay 150,000 euros each because they did not comply with the Dortmund ruling. So oh. the, the court has to had to ask them all, please pay and please now do what we tell you to do because we are a court of law. Now, what, what does that mean? Finally, after FIFA paid their 150,000 euros, they issued uh, a statement saying that as of retrospectively, as of May 24th, uh, the FIFA agent regulations, no, the new ones no longer apply in Germany. And, and uh, everybody having a link to the German market is exempt from these regulations. Now the big question is how is of course when do I have a link to the German market? In the FIFA statement that was publicized, they said everybody who has a link to Germany has a link to the German market. Now that does not help very much. Hmm. Um, so the question that everybody is asking themselves is what is a link to the German market or to Germany? I unfortunately can't answer that question. I can only tell you what is not a link to Germany. It's certainly not enough because that is something that has been governed by the ordinary courts in Germany. It is not enough, let's say you're an, you're an, you're an English agent doing transfer from an English club, uh, an English player from an English club to a Spanish club. 
and um, you go and you 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 have an intermediary agreement or uh, an agent agreement with the Spanish club, and in and in the in that agreement you write this agreement is governed by German law. All that right. is that is not enough. That is not enough. Yeah. So if if any of the parties involved, whether it's the agent, any of the two clubs, or the player, is a German national, question arises: Is that enough of a link? Yes or no? What definitely is enough if any of the parties is actually uh, domiciled in Germany. So any international tra transfer to a German club from a German club, any international transfer of a German player is exempt. So, so, yeah. so, so, right. so when you know you mentioned the European courts, it, it's it's sort of been it, uh, people are challenging in in their local uh, their territory. When is the European Court likely to give us some, you know, if there is a, a, a hardcore cartel, a competition, you know, when is that likely to happen? Because, you know, these, 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 these rules have come in on the 1st of October. FIFA is sticking to the guns. and Yeah, know. which is why, which is, and, 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 and I think Roberto has, has uh, summarized that, that correctly. Um, that is one of the, that is one of the, the problems that we're facing. The European Court of Justice will probably not rule until 2025. So yeah. we're, we've, we're facing judicial limbo for for next 24 months. Now, for transfer, which, for transfer. Yes, which, which may even be enhanced if the appellant court Dusseldorf on January 24th upholds the decision of the district court in Dortmund, because then you have a situation where Germany Really becomes that 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 shiny city on the hill where everybody is exempt. Everybody's trying to get into Germany, trying to get a link to to, to the German market to be to get around to get legally yep. around the new regulations. What is the uh, price of a, an apartment in Berlin, Gregor? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's cheap there's cheaper places than Berlin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone can have a little look at Germany and uh, see how they get on. Yeah, uh, yeah get out of your later hosen. <laughs> what's Harry Kane doing in later hosen? It wasn't, you know, I suppose it's in the contract, but uh, uh, indeed it I, is. Yes, I, I, <laughs> uh, if you want to continue to speak about later hosen of Harry Kane? No worries, but uh, <laughs> now I uh, I wanted to make an extra point, which is um something that uh, maybe not everyone has been thinking of but the german link will be valid for the whole world from the moment that you prove that you have that german link so the situation well quite funny let's put it like this in the netherlands i bring a player from whatever barcelona to ajax yeah I want to be active on the Dutch market. However, I work via a vehicle uh, or a company where I'm um, established in uh, in Germany. So I want to be active in the Dutch market to bring the player to Ajax. I have a German link. That means that the FIFA football regulations will not apply. The FIFA football regulations place uh, on the National Football uh, Association the authority or the obligation to implement these regulations, the national football agent regulations. So that means that these national regulations will also not be applicable to me because they're a product of the FAR. Yeah. So in what kind of legal landscape do I arrive then? I have no idea because I sp spoke to the KNVB, the Dutch FA, and they said, I said, well, then apparently the Dutch regulations apply. No, they don't apply because the football regulations don't apply. So, what applies? I think just general law yep. in relation to job placement applies to my activities in the Netherlands or any other country if I have this German link. Yeah. So, so if I would be FIFA, I would really be uh, very seriously thinking about trying to amend this situation, you know, as, I, as I mentioned before. So that's an interesting one. So all the people that are listening now, if someone has a German link, yeah. Not only look at the regulations that apply in your specific country, but look at the civil laws that actually govern job placement services. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is, in 
the whole system of job placement throughout the world, and I'm still a lawyer, so I know, there is this International Labour Organization Treaty that has been ratified by around 40 countries that states, like in the Netherlands, and it's probably what people know it uh, from, that the actual worker can't pay, is not allowed to pay for his own intermediation. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to be stuck between a rock and a hard place where you're not applying the FIFA regulations, but at the same time are circumventing or breaching civil laws. But funnily enough, um, Roberto, you've just touched on something because our FA sent out a circular, the, the English FA, sorry guys, I'm based up in, in Newcastle. They sent out a circular about the, you know, the, the, their up and coming national uh, regulations. But they also put a little attachment on to say um, those services where recruitment agencies and the and the and the law that governs recruitment agencies, they're looking at how football agents work, and that was just like you throw another, you open another can of worms. But it relates to what the point that you're making about well, what actually does govern if there's nothing else in place? So. You know the football, uh, the the football association haven't elaborated on that, but they threw that in there. They put that in a circular saying we haven't a look at the, you know, all the recruitment agencies in in this country are governed by a certain code as well. So that was just more complex, you know, putting more uh, a complex situation, making it worse. Um, let let's move on to the national associations because it, under FAR. The national associations were supposed to have their rules and regulations in place on the 30th of September, the day before um, the FIFA regulations came in. Who hasn't done that? Who hasn't done that? Well, Germany hasn't because yeah. they're they were prohibited from doing so. Yeah. No, so yeah. the Dutch the Dutch have without with the exception of uh, of the uh, caps and uh, the limits of uh, dual representation. Right. And some con other countries have done so uh, as well, you know. For as far as I know in Italy there has been no clear implementation. Uh, in France obviously the situation with the uh, with the national uh, laws yeah. that still uh, prevail. And for I also heard from many countries that they've actually just one on one implemented the FIFA regulations. So it's a scattered landscape uh, everywhere. Yeah, I think part for every country in the world. England um, have, have delayed doing their um, yeah. regulations. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Because there was, I think there was four of the big agencies. I think it was Stella, um, Aret, Unique. I think there was about four agencies. Jonathan Barnett was very. Uh, vociferous about FIFA. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about what's happening in England for some of the guys on the call? Well, in all honesty, in England, what we've what we've learned is obviously that's uh, a huge confidentiality around the Rule K um, Rule K arbitration procedure, uh, and uh, we can't we just can't say too much uh, about it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to uh, create any. Uh, potential you know idea about it Let, let's 30th of november that's what we know we're waiting for news the 30th of november we're waiting for news in germany was it the 24th of january gregor yes yes that's good. well on the 24th of january will be the oral hearing right okay yeah. so let's move on and gregor in your role and congratulations on being a member of fifa's uh football agent working group congratulations on that um, just tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, um, FIFA created under the new regulations, they created that, that, uh, agent working group. Honestly, yeah. I don't know if I'm exempt from it now, considering that I'm German. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so far there was one meeting held on May 25th in Zurich, which was quite an interesting meeting on an interesting date because it, the meeting, was held uh, roughly 24 hours after Dortmund handed down their judgment and basically stopped the uh, the new regulations in uh, in um, in Germany. Um, now, I mean, generally speaking, uh, uh, with without going into the details of the new regulations too much, I think it's actually does make sense that that FIFA speaks with the relevant. Uh, 
uh, people in the in the market. It, it needs, however, it needs to be one one issue needs to be addressed. And as far as the agents are concerned, although FIFA has always said we have had a dialogue uh, with with the agent and there have been talks uh, before implementing the new regulation that is simply not correct the agents up until today are not considered a stakeholder in 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 the in, in that entire game and that is something that needs to be remedied yeah. uh, in order to come to 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 serious talks uh, the meeting in itself was was interesting. What, what what was probably the most interesting part was the fact that FIFA tried to brush over the the Dortmund judgment by saying, "Yeah, there, yes, the regulations have been challenged in court, and yes, we have won everything." And uh, when I interfered, I said, "Well, yeah, I, but remember yesterday, I said, yeah, what 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 does one district court really mean? It's really nothing." And I was like, "Well, I mean, it's a district court in one of the big five markets." that has uh, implementations on all over Europe, I think that is something that you need to take serious. And it, it showed, with, which then was, was further underlined by the fact that they actually got fined by the court. It, it showed that there is a certain attitude within FIFA that they believe themselves to be above the law. And I think it's about time that the courts tell them, no, you're not. You you will have, if, if this is, uh, you are. You can make your own laws by saying whether a foot, game of football is 90 minutes or 95 minutes, whether it's a red card, a yellow card, a green card, a blue card, we don't care. But when the game is over, you will have to adhere to our laws and our rules and regulations, and you can't just make up your own. And um, that was one of the most interesting takeaways. The other thing was, um, and still is, with all these these new uh, regulations that that FIFA celebrates as the answer to all questions within the agency business, one question is is not answered, and it was not answered during that that meeting either. Is how on earth do you want to enforce these regulations? There is nobody, literally nobody at FIFA, that knows how a transfer works. They don't know how it's done. Right. And in order to to inf to regulate a market, you, you must be able to enforce the rules. And you can only enforce the rules if you understand how the market works. FIFA does not understand how that market works. FIFA does not have the capacity to to um, uh, uh, to enforce the rules. So that and that's what I meant uh, earlier when when. Roberto told me that I would be the bold one today. Um, <laughs> they, I think from a, the, 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 the interesting part about the new regulation really is not so much the cap. I know that's the one from a, as a practitioner you were really worried about. But the interesting part is Article 13, which implements the clearinghouse system. Because what will happen in reality is, should the new regulations really be enforced all over the world? The clearinghouse will show that all of a sudden payments to agents will drop to 6%. Everybody knows that is that will never be the case because there will always be ways around it and possibilities to circumvent it. But FIFA, and that's why I believe, and, and I've said that publicly, it's basically, it's it does not serve the market, but it's a propaganda coup because Infantino will all of a sudden appear and say, yeah, I told you so, it's only 6%. Here, look at my clearinghouse numbers. Yeah, I'm the great hero. That's not that's not going to be the case. It's going to hurt. It's going to create more intransparency in the market. And it's going to, it's not going to hurt Manchester City. It's not going to hurt Erling Haaland or their agent, but it's going to hurt the clubs in the championship, the clubs in the fight in the second Bundesliga, the smaller players, the smaller agents. And that is really what, and, and, and that is something that, from my point of view, it, FIFA does not care about. They don't care about that. So just wrap it up and then I'll answer your question or any question. Um, the next meeting um, is going to be in Saudi Arabia in December. I, I'm wondering if I'll be invited after what I've said uh, over the over the past few weeks and months. Uh, and well, we'll see what what 
uh, happens then, I'm certain that FIFA will celebrate the um, the, the CAS award and, and, and say that is the only award that is relevant for us. Uh, we will not have any new verdict at that time out of Germany. We may have one uh, out of England. Hopefully that will be in uh, in line with the, with the District Court of Dortmund. And I think if England really uh, uh, allies itself with the German courts, uh, I think that might serve as a wake-up call to FIFA, saying if the two biggest markets in Europe say, no, we're not going to do that, we really have to adjust those regulations. And I would like to add that also to if, if you allow that the situation in the Netherlands and also for the people that are present here and that are in one way or another involved in national cases, um, it is very, very relevant what happened in the Netherlands because basically the Dutch agent association, pro-agent, uh, went to court claiming that these regulations need to be suspended, you know, at least until the time that the European Court of Justice will come out uh, with an answer to the questions uh, of Dortmund. Having said that, the case is still pending and we went into appeal in order to try, still try to get an interim injunction. But now the clubs and the KNVB actually requested FIFA themselves for a suspension. So we've actually won the case without even going now to an oral hearing. So it is a very important step to show that even national FA and clubs are actually willing to suspend the regulations. Some countries, the FAs, might be afraid to uh, to organize that because of sanction and repercussions of FIFA, which you understand because it's a pyramid system and obviously regulation of FIFA need to be implemented. So I get that. And I get that, uh, that uh, primal fear. But if... I will be a judge. I will actually help those parties and say, okay, if you don't feel the uh, the, the power of, or the authority to cancel these regulations for the time being, I will help you and we will do it because it's tremendous amount of proof that even clubs and associations are not able to fully comprehend the, uh, the value of these regulations in this sense. Again, the legitimate... The objectives are legitimate, I believe, and I think every judge will say the same. Only the proportionality is a very big issue. Guys, I, I do have a question, and it's, were you surprised that FIFA went ahead on the 1st of October and said, yes, the, the, the coming into full force on the 1st of October, whatever that means for, for in each, for you know, all the territories that we've mentioned have their own situations going on. Were you guys surprised that they didn't sort of say, well, look, we've got England, we've got Germany, we've got this one. Let's put it back to the 1st of February and let's go for the January window as it were. What's your take on it? Well, if, if I may, Gregor, first, you know, I'm, I'm naive by, by choice, I would say, Tony, <laughs> as I really become, uh, become frustrated in this international football industry. Uh, and I thought at a certain moment that they would realise that it would really become a burden and it wouldn't be losing their face if they would say, come on, you know, let's, let's see what comes out of, of these court decisions and then uh, have a, a sound next step. But uh, obviously, uh, that was not the case. You know, they chose to uh, to do it uh, this way. And um, well, I'm not I'm not sure if it's 100 percent being convinced that these regulations are one are, are totally in accordance with competition law or if it's just uh, a, a tactic legal strategy that I was surprised in uh, in a way. You were surprised. Well, but, Gregor? Yeah, it would have been wise after the Dortmund judgment uh, was handed down to say, um, well, we have a suspension in one of the big five markets in order uh, for everybody involved to get legal clarity. And, and at the same time, we had a pending preliminary ruling procedure with the European Court of Justice. Uh, and for, for, for everybody within the football market to have clear legal uh, 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 fences to have a le clear legal situation will suspend until the ECJ decides. That would have been wise. Having said that, it does not surprise me that FIFA implemented them because wise and FIFA is uh, simply not two words to be used in one sentence. Um, I don't think but, you I don't think you're getting invited back to Riyadh. No, I don't think so either. Um, but it, it actually it, it actually underlines what, what my suspicion. This is politically motivated and not 
it, it, it is covered up as something good for the industry, which it is clearly not, as, as I, th I, think, I think has been made clear, and it's, and it's politically motivated. But let me just, I, I just want to comment on one, one thing that Roberta said earlier, and I, and I really, because that's actually very true and shows that in, in Europe, as always, the bold guys are the Dutch, because what the, what the KNVB and the clubs have done without pressure from a court, uh, having stood up and said, no, we're not going to do this. We cannot implement that really shows where the power lies. And if a small football association as a KMVB has the guts to say that, I would call upon the big ones in Germany and England and Spain to Italy and France to follow suit. Because if they say, no, this is creating a total mess. We're not going to do it. Let the ECJ decide. And if they decide it's proper, fine. But if they say it's not proper, then we're not going to do it. I think that would be that would be the, the the correct way of 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 doing that. And therefore, um, when I heard about the decision of the of the KMVB and the Dutch club, it's really something that then that you you must applaud them for. Yeah. So so let me just ask about France and Italy. So if you're a registered, um, sorry, a, a FIFA licensed agent. Currently, not and not resident or based in Italy or France and Germany. If you're not based in those countries, does that mean you cannot do any business with those countries unless you you apply, you, you know you, you 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 do the exam in France and you you know it seems to me like they've got a bit of protectionism in in you know particularly France and Italy. What do you think? Is that is that naive or is that? What would be naive uh, exactly, Tony? Like have have the French got uh, you know they you know they've got total control of their market and it's hard for people who are not based in France or haven't got the French agents uh, exam but the FIFA license agents to work in France or Italy. Yeah, well, I, I think they still stick to the same situation and that you will have the system where the FIFA license is your uh, gateway to uh, many countries, but. Italy and France, uh, if Italy moves into the direction that it seems to move now, then you will still need to collaborate with an Italian agent or being, being based there, you know, like in, in France situation or have an equivalent license. Uh, I think that the same criteria will apply, you know, that you will have to prove that you have a certain amount of uh, years uh, that you're active, uh, have been active as, a, as an agent. Okay. Uh, which is not easy, you know, because we know that many agents are not able to work in France at all because they don't uh, aren't granted the license there. Yeah, right. Let's let's go. We've got some questions here. We've got a quarter of an hour of the the webinar left. Uh, Mario says, and and whoever wants to answer it can jump in. What do you recommend agents do in countries where there have been no national regulations formulated? as required by FIFA, like in the USA, especially when dealing with solely national issues? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's problematic. And from my perspective, I think you will have to look at uh, at civil law. And uh, that's, uh, that's problematic. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Murray asks... Have the other UK home nations, so obviously England have got a suspension on their own um, national regulations. Have the other UK home nations, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, adopted the same position as the FA in England and suspending FAR until the 30th of November? I'm, I'm not 100%. I don't know, Gregor, about you. Well, no. That's a very good question, uh, but I would, from the top of my head, I would say I haven't read anything or heard anything that they have done so. So I think for now it's only the FA, and I can't assess the impl implications that has on the other two, on the other three uh, course, national what, associations. As far as I know, Scotland uh, has been uh, limited also. Uh, okay, similar as uh, as. In yeah, and, and it will be quite a small market, Scotland and Northern Ireland and, and, and Wales as well. Um, Adam has a question. If I am in a country that has to abide by the new FAR, the service fee will be agreed 
within the representation at FIFA's rate. So if I had a player transferring to Germany to any extent, would I still have to abide by FIFA's regulations? No. Uh, in, in that case, you have a clear link to the German market or to Germany because the club, the new club is German, based in Germany. That's a, that's a clear uh, link to Germany. Therefore, you the entire transfer, everybody involved in that transfer will be exempt from the new regulations. And, and Adam says also, would my agent's license be valid to conclude the transfer? Yes, from, uh, because in Germany, what Germany has done in as far as that exempt situation is concerned, uh, we have simply extended the current regulations. So in Germany, you would still have to, uh, 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 um, you have to still, you would still have to register yourself for the transfer, as you would have needed to done all those many years ago. Yeah. So, so you would need to be registered in Germany as a as a licensed agent in Germany under the national regulations. Correct. Correct. Just one bit of knowledge. Um, Germany, uh, the German civil law does not uh, know a, a license for employment agencies. So if you are an, um, uh, an, an employment agent, which you are as a football agent, that is a trade that you can do freely in Germany. There is no, you don't need no government license. You don't need to register with the government. There's basically there's very limited regulations. Um, the only thing that you should know is there is a, actually there's a cap on fees by national law, but only in in as far as uh, you are being paid by the athlete, by the employee, not right. by the employer, the club. There is no cap. You can take whatever you want, but it's there's a cap in in relation to the athlete. And and you would be able to do dual rep or something. Yes, like that. yes, dual rep is legal under German law. Yes, what you need to do there is you need to disclose that to all the parties. Everybody needs to know that you're representing everybody. But as long as they know that, it's fine. So it's transparent, right? Yes. Anonymous question. Uh, can this? I think this is better for you, Roberto. Can you explain what an agent can do with regard to approaching players? What is the best practice when you can't be in more than one place at a time? We touched on this, didn't we? Yeah, I would say that in terms of... Um... You know, if I would just quickly share the screen screen again, I will not go into. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. Um. Well, obviously, you know that in terms of of conclusion, the question would be, you know, in terms of division of services, what services do you offer, and obviously seek to uh, minimize uh, the loss, I would say, in, in that sense, and that also falls under the bigger heading where this question could be uh, uh, charted under. If you look at what kind of, because obviously the question is, I as a football agent, you know, and do an approach, blah, blah, blah. If you look, if you want to be on the safe side there and you have a company with multiple people working there and you realize that the approach as you know it normally would um, uh, would be under scrutiny now because you would ask someone from your firm, you know, or from your agency to do the approach, then you, it could be problematic. But it also depends on how you do it because you see many agencies, again, the, make the vision of your services. If you want to approach a player, by saying, listen, we have a management company, an agency, we do a lot of services in terms of general management of a career. I'm not aware of the fact that you have a professional representation agreement in terms of job placement, you know, so I don't want to go there. But in any case, this is our firm, this is what we do. Look at it and perhaps you're, uh, you're interested. And I would focus on the services that do not require a license in that sense, you know. Is it circumventing the rules? I don't think so, because you're actually saying, you know, we're providing us some additional services. And then I think it's also better for the player because uh, or his uh, environment, because uh, he's free to have a choice also. You know, does he want to, to, to divide his uh, his um, his uh, services that he takes on uh, by one company or the other company? It might be a little bit difficult for starters, but if you want to be on the safe side, 
I think you can create perfectly a WhatsApp message, you know, that follows all the rules, ticks all the relevant boxes without running the risk that uh, your competitor is immediately taking a screenshot and sending it to FIFA. You know, I think I think you need to be very aware of how to position yourself in that sense. And I think it's possible. And, and you know, I think with all these regulations, when it comes down to it and there's, there's complaints, there's people doing what, you know, people are acting like you said there, Will FIFA have the teeth and the, in, you know, will there be people, enough people in FIFA to administer all of this? And, it, you know, it could potentially. But Tony, that, that's the point, you know, that, that, I'm, that I'm making. Because on the one hand, on the one hand, FIFA is saying the other services, we you're free to carry out other services. But by the way, if you do carry them out, we assume you're circumventing the cap. So we need to know every other service that you're carrying out, you know. So it's a little bit of a paradox uh, there. So if you are able to define what other services you are uh, offering to your client, yeah, then FIFA can't do no other than accept it, you know? And if you don't take me seriously, well, it's not my, my fault, right? The one person can do scouting and do management by picking up the phone and uh, diving into uh, 30 years plus of experience in the market. The other person uses a data system and uh, provides you with 50 pages and all nice pictures and how fast your player is and so on and so on and so on, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we just had a, a comment which is useful from Nathan Chambers, who Nathan was very, very good uh, helping people um, with education to pass the egg, the agent's exam in, in, in various, well, in English. So thank you for that, Nathan. He says, Scotland have followed suit with England. Um, Jeff also says uh, the Scottish FA has in, uh, intimated to FIFA that the implementation of the new national football agent regulations has been that have been scheduled for the first of October will now be delayed. So they've gone into line with the FA as well. The Scottish have gone in line to the the Football Association. Uh, Christopher asks. Are there any other national FAs that have suspended the implementation of the new rules on their own initiative? And do you know where I can read more about the Dutch FA's decision to do so? So thanks for that. That's for you, Roberto. No, I'm, I'm not aware uh, of uh, FAs that have done it on their own initiative. Yeah. Uh, wanna, I don't want to push too much that the FA in the Netherlands did it on their own initiative. Obviously. There was a court case uh, pending, you know, so that was also one of the objectives and the motivations for uh, for taking this uh, this decision. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that today they've published something on uh, on their website, but um, yeah, I think people have our contacts if necessary. You know, they can get into uh, can get in touch. We can, uh, you guys are on LinkedIn and 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 you know, yeah. the, but your various social um, outlets. So. Uh, That'll be interesting from the Dutch FA's point of view. Um, we're just getting towards the last couple of questions. Um, again, anonymous. If you have a connection to Germany and are planning a transfer from Germany to the Netherlands, I think we've answered that one. I think, yeah, any transfer that's got Germany in the title, you know, German club. So we'll move on to the next one. Would uh, this is, again, what we spoke about from Anonymous. Would conducting agent services through a German entity be a link, uh, Gregor? Well, um... even though he says, even though the the trans the transaction doesn't involve a German club. I can, can I, I can share my, oh, no, I can't, because otherwise I would have shown, can I share my screen? Because then I can show you what FIFA yes. has said. Uh... Your screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think no, um, it's been de deactivated. It tells I'll me now, Gregor. Just hold on. Okay, hold on. See, it's already already FIFA has deactivated me. For <laughs> I said. It's been oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You you can. You All can... right. Okay, you should be able to hear. Um, the bottom part where it says a link to the German market will be deemed to exist as soon as any party to a transfer agent, club player, or coach has a link to Germany. That is basically what FIFA has says. Therefore, to answer the the, the the question, if the if the agent is an entity within Germany, German based, then yes, there is a link to the German market, even if 
club player, coach, whoever is based in is based outside of Germany, non-German clubs, non non-German player. As long as the agent is what the 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 question there is is it enough if the agent is German mm. or does the agency have to be domiciled in Germany? I would say uh I I I would say the letter is definitely safe. I have I, I have a client who's a German who's not based in Germany. He's asked me the same question, and I said, "Well, go base yourself in Germany." Um, so yes, if if that is the case, then then you will have a link to the German market. However, if you now all planning on uh, saying, "Well, great, I'll just rent a room in Berlin, Munich," uh, while well, the Oktoberfest is just over, so don't go to Munich, uh, Frankfurt, or wherever. Keep in mind, once you have an entity in Germany, you will be liable for taxes in Germany, at least with that entity. And if you don't do it properly, it, the, the German tax authorities are being uh, extremely aggressive. They actually might come knocking down your door and say, well, that's great. Well, you pay taxes on what you've done in Germany, but all those other millions of euros that you've earned outside of Germany, ah, you're a German entity. So please pay taxes here in my country. That is so. If you if you plan on doing that, um, please 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 double check with the tax attorney. Thanks, Gregor. Listen, we we're almost out of time. I'm just going to go to Roberto. Um, I know you've got an important call at four o'clock. Just want to just finishing comments, Roberto, please. Uh, well, just like uh, Gregor mentioned, also obviously people will be looking for ways to uh, structure their business in a way uh, to minimize uh, loss. Um, I think it is necessary to look very critically at what kind of services you provide and if you're able to define those services. And obviously, uh, we are looking uh, into situations where uh, by following the regulation, you will still have enough flexibility to minimize the loss you know i can't promise that you will be able to earn the same amount of money but perhaps your business allows it to uh, minimize the loss a lot of businesses won't because they're solely focused on intermediary services and transactions but um, yeah we're always open to uh, to discuss and see how uh, a specific business is structured and to find potential ways to uh, to assist agents you have to realize tony will stuck between a rock and a hard place again on the one hand we believe that regulation is necessary uh and on the other hand we are very um we are very critical towards these uh, sets of reg of rules and um the members of uh, of afa and uh, agents in general their livelihoods and uh, their uh, their actual lives, you know, are, are more important than the regulation. So I can understand that uh, you will have to look to find ways to survive. Thank you, Roberto. So listen, guys, really uh, that that hour and a half, that ninety minutes has gone fast, so gone past so quickly. This is a really dynamic and changing situation as we've try to outline um i think we need to do another one of these maybe after the fa tells us what they're going to do um so thank you so much gregor really appreciated your comment your company you're very welcome and and thanks thank for having me yeah no it's been absolutely fantastic a really interesting 90 minutes and and thank you so much roberto um the European Football Agents Association are sort of at the heart of this um, ongoing dynamic situation. So let's hope we can um, get as much clarity as possible for you guys. And, and thanks can, for attending. Can I just uh, mention that um, on the 8th of November, we have another uh, quite big event supported by AFA in, uh, in Wembley. Uh, take uh, note of uh, LinkedIn and uh, hopefully, Tony, we can uh, collaborate also. We'll, we'll get all the guys, all the information. There was a couple of people. If you guys can leave us now, that's absolutely fine. We've, we're going to share some slides. I've got to thank George as well for supporting the webinar. He's going to be able to share some slides, please, George, with the uh, guests. So thank you so much, everyone, for attending um, and good luck out there. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank Cheers, you, guys. Tony. Thanks, Roberto. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.